Well, good afternoon, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Great warm up today, isn't it? Great to see the sunshine and the you know mid to upper 30s around parts of the area. But unfortunately, it's not going to last. We've got a little bit of snow on the way, so we'll dive right in and talk about our Valentine's Day snow. Today's video being brought to you by High Voltage Mobile DJ Service. You can contact Nathan here at 630 9465 or visit him on the web at djhighvoltage.com. Nathan does a fantastic job, so please go check them out if you need to DJ and tell them Southern Indiana Weather sent you. All right, here's a live look here. It's uh, 2.30 Eastern Time in the afternoon, 1.30 Central Time. Not really worried here about this snow up to our north. That's going to skirt us by here in Southern Indiana. Our next weather maker is this little system right here on our radar and satellite loop. Uh, we've got an interesting setup going on for tomorrow. And... Uh, Essentially, what you have is you've got an area of low pressure building up in here. You've got another low pressure built up in here, and you can kind of see how it's wrapping around. And this will have a, a little bit of a tail on this uh, still is, is wrapping around here. Uh, this low pressure essentially is going to slide down our direction tomorrow, and it's going to move faster, considerably faster than this one. So as it meets up, uh, the energy left over from the back end of this system is going to meet up with this system. And really it'll dive more in a direction like that and that will give us accumulating snow chances really for the parts uh, of the area that i have circled in red here all right so that's kind of the setup of what to expect temperatures are going to be absolutely critical for tomorrow as we go through this let's take a look let's time it out first on future radar i've got three quick future radar views i want to show you paints off three different pictures here to get an idea on timing and then we'll talk about snow amounts as well all right, so first we're going to take a look at our, uh, well, really all three of these radars are our high-resolution models, okay? This is the one we call the ARW, and uh, it, it does a fairly good job, but I want you to notice the different scenarios it paints for us. First thing I want you to notice is this blue line. This is a 32 line. This is the freezing line. So it plots the freezing temperature for us. That's helpful in trying to determine these. Let's take a look at the light snow. Here's 8 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning. You notice you're still the freezing line moving right through our area. As this goes on, notice the light snow moves in, but we're above freezing over a large part of southern Indiana. If we are above the 32 mark, that's going to really limit the snow accumulation potential that we can get. So, and as you notice, as you run through with this with the ARW model, uh, by the time the freezing line has moved all through us, most of the snow has moved through us as well. So if you believe this model, I think that we would have uh, accumulations confined mostly to the grassy areas. And, um, you, know, you know, roads ought to be decently clear if you're above freezing. So that's one model's take on it, all right? Let's take a look at another one. Here we are in the NMM. Um, we'll talk about the acronyms another time. You notice as this moves through, notice where the freezing line is. It's well to the south of us. If the scenario plays out, yes, we could have a bit more accumulation with this. Starts to move over us again, limits the accumulation possible there, then moves back in with a little bit more on the backside. Snow lasts longer with this model. With the NMM, we'll start it out here, the snow about 7, 8 in the morning. With the ARW that I showed you, we're starting out snow here again about 8, 9 in the morning before it gets underway. And with this particular model, it's all done by, you know, uh, 5, 6 o'clock at night. All right. Let's take a look at our 4-kilometer NAM, which is the one that we usually look at the most. And let's track it out through this afternoon. There's that snow to our north. Here comes in. It wants to bring a potential of a little bit of rain with it. I don't buy that. I think the collaring is just off in the model. Notice how far to the south the 32-degree line is here. And uh, so as this moves through and it rolls through, yeah, the 32-9-degree line uh, skirts closer to us. But we've got some heavy snow with this potentially to deal with in the afternoon. Notice in this model, we stay below freezing the entire time, so that would bring a potential for more accumulations with that model. All right, Temperatures are going to be absolutely critical with this. I don't have a future radar available for the GFS. The GFS does not have that product available. What I can show you is precipitation type, and we can talk about timing. First of all, here we are at 7 a.m. and tomorrow morning, and you know there's not much going on yet. The system is still here diving into us. By the time 1 p.m. comes, it's overtaken our area. So sometime mid-morning is what the GFS is pointing to. This is a little bit later of a start time than what those higher resolution models are saying. So a bit of a discrepancy there. We'll just have to time it out. Hopefully the models tonight will give us a little bit more of those ideas. I've got some meetings to go to at church tonight, but whenever I get back from those, 
I'll look at the evening data and may have another video out, although it would be late tonight. Certainly another one out in the morning, and we'll be tracking this as it comes in. Regardless, we'll get some accumulating snow. It's only going to be a question of how much. All right. Temperatures are going to be absolutely critical. Uh, here we are with the GFS, and it's taking us near the freezing line. Again, if, if we get up to 32, 33, or even 31, road salt will work pretty well with that. So we may just, this is going to be a heavy wet snow, folks, regardless of, of how we cut it. So if we can get to near the freezing mark, even 30 to 32, maybe even 33 degrees, Roads ought to be in decent shape for this and, and, and would be more confined to grassy areas for accumulation. If we get temperatures down into the 20s, then we're going to start to get more of a problem. The GFS wants to dip us down into the 20s later in the evening, so keep that in mind. High resolution NAM is a little bit more aggressive with the colder weather as well. Here we are by tomorrow afternoon. It warms us up to a high of only around 30, 31 in the area before quickly plummeting us into the mid-20s by the evening. This would definitely give us some accumulations. Just for good measure, the Canadian I want to show you is, is a similar vein where it keeps us in the low 30s and then quickly plummets our temperature in the afternoon. Let's talk about snow accumulations and then we'll shut down this thing and end it. I don't want to get too long for y'all on this. All right, here's what the high, high resolution NAM is saying. And uh, remember the first blue shade, start out your two inch. So uh, places down here uh, along the Ohio River may get more towards an inch with this, whereas you get two and even three and up to four inches in places with the NAM. Maybe a little bit over aggressive in my opinion because it's it's potentially banking on um, more. Uh, it, it's banking on colder weather, and I'll be honest with you, the models this week have had a cold bias towards them. They've consistently predicted us being a little bit colder than what we are. Now with them being predicting a little bit colder than we are. If that bias continues, we may warm up a little bit more than the models say. That would lessen the snow totals. We'll have to see, but I'll show you what the data says. The GFS, not as aggressive, uh, you know, a two, maybe three inch at tops in the area, and most of us getting maybe only an inch out of it. Canadian, very aggressive, almost some six inch pockets in here. This is completely the outlier, not buying it. Is it a viable solution? Yeah, if we can stay cold enough, but I'm not sure that we can stay cold enough. All right. So let me show you what my thoughts are on this. I've, I've kind of went with a mix of the models. If you're down in the Evansville area, maybe even as far as Spencer County cutting down through here, even Princeton area, trace to one inch is what I'm thinking at this point. And then a band setting up here pretty wide of a one to three inch plus because there could be some surprises where, where, where it does stay significantly below freezing and we get some heavier snow bands setting up. Now, I'll be honest with you, again, the bus potential for this system is huge because if we warm up into the mid to upper 30s, uh, which I don't think that we will, but if we warm up at least to the mid 30s, and then, yeah, the bus potential could be huge with this. This is something we're just going to have to watch the temperatures tomorrow morning whenever it starts snowing, and we'll be able to fine-tune it. Hopefully tonight, the models will get a better handle on the situation. Um, now that it's really uh, entering our upper air network into the United States, the models tonight will be able to sample a little bit better, so I'll have some updates for us later this evening. Seven-day forecast, southernindianaweather.com, folks. You can go there and get it. Beautiful sunshine. Enjoy it today because tomorrow, cloudy with that light snow likely. Uh, again, those light snow accumulations are possible. I'm forecasting a high of 32 degrees. I could reasonably see us going to 34 or 35, though, if the models continue with this cold bias. Like I could say, hopefully we'll be able to fine-tune those details a little bit tonight. Look at this, though. We're still predicting a nice warm-up later this week, so enjoy that. Finally, real quick, if you go to southernindianaweather.com, you can also click on Interactive Radar. Just to point this out, you can actually track the snow live as it moves in tomorrow. All right? So that's it for the video today, folks. Uh, we'll look over the model data as it rolls in tonight and have another one of these updates. Right now, again, it doesn't look like a huge snow, but certainly there's some potential there. Could be a bust, could be a big one. We're kind of right on the fence, unfortunately, with our temperatures on this one. But we will keep an eye on it tonight, and we'll have more updates. For Southern Indiana Weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great night, folks.